there's a kind of way that David creates a space that is both uh, nurturing and caring, but he's also not going to hold your hand. He's also not going to sugarcoat things. He's also, uh, and I find that space very invigorating to be in, where it's like, okay, well, we don't have a lot of time. Everyone's opted in because they want to have challenging conversations. So let's get down to it, right? And we'll be respectful and we'll be kind to each other, but we're, we're, this is, we're going to get down to work here. And so they are, uh, and then the, there's the community of people that you meet as well. I mean, uh, certainly the, the level one was a really international cohort and I met people in, you know, I was there as recently hired at the university at UBC and I was meeting um, activists and educators from all over the world. So it was also just the cross pollination of people. So uh, it's it's all of that and and more. Um, and thank you, David. Uh, he's he's very patient. He's a really really good teacher. I would recommend it to everyone, uh, not only just to develop the skills, but to understand the underlying principles. Why did I want to do the training? Because I am an educator. Um, and I like to know the why of all things, that's one thing. And I also want to know these skills so I could use them when I do my workshops as well. And I, I really wanted, I, I, this is a skill you know, that I want to I, I wanna use. I, want, I, I find it just so, I don't know, beautiful is, it kind of captures it. Things I learned at the summer trainings um, first of all, there's the, the methods themselves, right? Just being comfortable with the procedures, right? You, you, this is the way this game works. You need to communicate this first. And if you leave out that part, then you're going to go, oh, I forgot to tell them they had to have their eyes closed. There's just the purely procedural. And, and David is so clear with that stuff um, and makes it so repeatable and dependable. So on a, on a level of just purely learning the pragmatics of doing this work, because that's part of how you create safety, is just a sure hand uh, as a facilitator. The embodied work is pivotal. Um, bodies, unless they're really well trained, don't lie. And so the revelations that can occur through embodied processes are often really impactful because of the truths that are revealed. Um, and it's not just the individual body, but it's the relationship between bodies, that space in between, which so often signifies important truths of whatever situation is being explored. I think the power behind the body image work is that um, everyone kind of can tell it's the same thing, but they take something different from it. And uh, whereas like just with uh, like speaking a statement or facts or whatever, um, you're kind of just feeding people exactly what they need to hear. I think what I've seen more than anything else is the opening up of a sense of the possibility for positive change in his work. It's not just the analysis of what's happening in the present, but in that collective energy that gets generated in these processes, there's often a sense of things can change. And in communities where there's despair, many challenges that seem perhaps really complex. The impact that I have felt most profoundly, I think, working with David, is that that can shift as a consequence of, and it happens very quickly. That's the thing about this work. It's not blah, 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 blah. It's that image is It's that image exemplifies the truth of my situation and the context within which I live. Then there's the personal transformations that go on in terms of 
just being able to broaden an ability to question one's own worldview, to uh, for me to understand ways in which privilege work that were previously invisible to me. Um, at the same time, to have compassion for myself in places where I don't know what I don't know uh, and to not beat myself up or to think that I need to know the answer. If I can engage in a conversation with genuine curiosity and genuine openness and empathy for others and myself that you know there's valuable learning. There's just an ethos of being in the world of um, suddenly paying attention to who's not being heard, suddenly being attention to who's taking up all the space and who hasn't had space to speak. Uh, just an awareness of those kinds of things that I'm not even necessarily conscious that that's what I'm learning. I just start to notice I'm noticing different kinds of things and different kinds of interactions. I think that, you know, if anyone's hesitating about whether or not they want to engage with theater for living, you know, the company is now not operating in the same way and we're all sad about that but also gratefully respect that David needs to do what's the right thing for David at this time in his life after giving so much. But the fact that he's still continuing to practice, if there's anybody out there who's wondering, mm, should I, is it? Do not miss the chance to do this work with David Diamond because uh, it doesn't get any better. And uh, I owe so much of what's going on in my life today um, and the blessings of my life to having been fortunate enough to have worked with Theatre for a Living and, and with David and with the whole team.